Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. All right guys, can you guess what we're talking about today? So, we're not talking Demi, if that's what you thought. I have gotten so many questions lately about warm versus cool, neutral, all the things when it comes to shadows and lip and cheeks. So, we're gonna do two parts. I'm gonna talk a little bit about color theory because I feel like you do have to understand a little bit about the basics of the color wheel. I feel like knowing a little background is what will enable you to see color. And be able to actually determine undertones so much easier. So in this part one, we're gonna talk basics of color theory and we're gonna go over eyeshadows and we're gonna talk about what makes something warm, cool, and we're gonna do a little bit about eyeshadows for eye color because I feel like this is all you have to know in order to find those colors that make your eye color pop. It's all a little bit of color theory. Then in part two, we're gonna do the lip and cheeks and do some lip and cheek combinations. So look out for that next. So if you wanna keep watching, learn a little bit about what makes a shade warm or cool and eyeshadows for your eye color, keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you know when my next video, part two, will drop. And as always, thanks for being here. So you probably tell I got most of my face done, but I did want to show you some eye shadow once we talk about color theory. And I'll be honest, if you have tried Demi or know anything about Demi, I feel like you already have the grasp of color theory and a little bit about the color wheel in general. Um, but Demi helped me learn color so much better. So you guys have probably heard me, I'm always talking about using a warm color, using a cool color, or being able to create balance and using them together when a color is off or feels off on your face. And all it is is a little bit of color science, okay? So if you are unfamiliar with the color wheel, this is a really fancy one, but I love the fact that it will show me kind of like, all right, you're gonna mix mix colors, what happens, that kind of thing. It has all of the different tones on the back. So I'm always getting asked, Sarah, you don't explain what warm is. And I guess I just assume everybody understands what warm and cool colors are. But I know that that is not true after years of doing this. It's just not common knowledge if you don't have any art background. Because if you do have an art background, I'm sure you understand the color wheel and mixing colors, um, especially if you were a painter or anything like that. And I do have a background in watercolor, so I do understand the basics before I even started with makeup. But it's the same concept that applies when it comes to demi color or picking an eyeshadow shade or a lip and cheek color and how you can kind of adjust knowing how to tell if a color is warm or cool or the neutrality of it. So let's just start with the basics. What's warm and what's cool? And I always describe something warm as something orange or red. But if you look at an actual color wheel, it gets split right down the middle, okay? Just think of orange and blue are what they call complementary colors. A lot of times complementary colors are easy to remember because they are like, sports teams or holidays, that kind of thing. And so you see those colors used together as like color combinations because they look good together. So red, green, Christmas, yellow, purple is kind of like Easter, orange and blue I always think of sports teams, right? So those are across from each other on the color wheel. So if you are familiar with Demi, you know that that is what you use to filter excess color. If you have excess blue or darkness in the face, you're gonna pick an orange in order to filter it out. So you already understand the color wheel basics, right? So if you're just kind of splitting it in half, warm 
is this upper half, okay? It goes from yellow, yellow, orange, orange, um, red, orange, red, and then you get into this red, violet. All of these are warm shades. Okay, so warms are those reds, oranges, yellows, okay? And then we get into cool, the opposite side, and that's when blue's in the middle. So we're going greens, blues, and those violets, those purple tones, right? But I always think of it as like going more towards blue or more towards orange, and that's kind of how I remember it because obviously these purples, right? Violet is cool, but red violet gets into the warm. That is why when a lot of times when I'm talking about those purple eyeshadows, some of them can lend warmer and that's because they have more red in them. And then some can be more cool because they have more blue in them, meaning they're a little bit more to the just straight purple or gray tones. Um, when we get into excess blue, that's usually getting into that darkness, that gray, black, that kind of thing. That is just excess blue. All right. So yellow to red, warm, green to purple is cool, right? Easy peasy. Now, my favorite thing about this color wheel is that you can easily see when you're mixing complementary colors. So we just discussed complementary is across from the color wheel. So let's say we have green okay which we know red and green christmas right what happens when you mix complementary colors and this is why um demi works because when you have excess it neutralizes it okay that's when you come up with a neutral right usually that's in the brown gray family you are already using demi you kind of understand that that is why Demi color works so well at neutralizing those distractions. And when it comes to eyeshadows, I mean, let's be honest, like we have a lot of neutral tones, okay? So the closer you get to that brown gray, that is just mixing of two oh. minery colors to give you different tones of a neutral. But that is why browns and grays can push more towards the cool and the warm side. And that's why learning how to recognize an undertone of a brown, for example, can really help you kind of pick the right neutral for your eye look, depending on what you're pairing it with, depending on the look you're going for, and being able to recognize color is crucial for that. So a lot of times I'm talking about, I talk about color family. So there's a lot of different um, terms, I guess you could say, uh, when it comes to talking about color that I'm not even gonna get into. That's like hue and value and intensity and all of these things like, you know, we normally just call red a color, but it's actually a hue in the art world. So I'm not gonna get into that, but I am gonna explain a little bit about when you're talking monochromatic looks, because a lot of times in makeup world, we do that, right? We want a like more sunset looking eye, or we wanna keep the eyes, lip, and cheeks in the same color family. I like to call it color family. But truly all it is, is different tints, tones, and shades. So what that means, so if you look at the back here, you can see each hue, each color, I like to call it, and then you can see how, well, let's see if I can turn the right one, okay? How adding different colors can kind of change that color, but they're all in the same family, right? Like you can look at these and say, okay, I can see that those all have a red undertone because that's what I think of as undertone, even if I'm looking at say a pink, right? So all a pink is, is a red with white added. Okay, so that is the definition of a tint. So these colors around the first level are all tints and that is just the pure color with white added. So if you think about it, it makes sense, right? You add white, it's just going to lighten that color. So that's all that pink is. So that is why pink is technically warm because it's in the red family. Does that make sense? Where it gets a little bit trickier is this next kind of level. And that is when you add 
gray, okay? So when you add gray, it can definitely sometimes change that color quite a bit, right? Sometimes it's a little bit harder to recognize what color family it came from, what its original hue was, um, because I'm like, okay, that's, all right, what is that, right? And so being able to kind of recognize just basic, does it look more orange, red, yellow? Does it look more blue, green? Um, is it warm or cool could kind of point you in the right direction. But all of these are, are gray, which is tone. So different tones. We're always talking about an undertone and that's kind of where that comes from. We have a lot of different tones when it comes to eyeshadow and lip and cheek um, because they're all just different mixtures of colors that are creating different tones that give us a variety of looks. And then shade is pretty easy. Shade is this darker one that is just adding black, okay? So different shades. I hope that makes sense. I feel like sometimes it makes more sense to think of it in that way and being like, okay, I can see those are all in the same color family. They're just mixed in different ways. That's giving us those different kind of intensities of color, lighter or darker, or right. tones. That makes sense that a tone has something like a gray mixed in, not necessarily just white or black, because it does change the overall color so much. Like when I was looking at this, I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, I could like pick these out. That looks like Crush. You can see why that is in the warm family because it is right at that level. So I'll kind of show you the difference, why we consider Sabrina probably more a warm highlight as opposed to unicorn, which is more icy white, okay? When something is icy, it actually has blue undertones in it. That's what's making it cool versus Sabrina or Drift that has more of that golden undertone, that cream undertone, which is more yellow, which is warm. So hopefully that makes sense. I will, of course, do some swatches so we can see. But when it comes to eyeshadow, it's a lot more the whole wheel, right? It makes sense. It's We have eyeshadows that cover every part of that color wheel, from blue to green, um, purples, everything in between, right? But then when we start talking about lip and cheeks, it's very different. We ignore this entire bottom. We don't have green or blue, but we do have this top part of the color wheel. Things can pull more purple. They can have more purple in them or they can have more yellow in them. So we stay more in this range, which is why lip and cheeks, when we get to that in part two, it's a little bit more, I guess it's a little bit harder to be able to just look at a lip and cheek and say, oh, that's cool or that's warm because everything is within this kind of end of the color wheel, but it can push one way or the other. It can push cool or it can push warm depending on the undertones of that shape. Because most of our lip and cheeks are in the red family or in the pink family, and we already established those are warm, right? But when it comes to eyeshadows, we're gonna talk the whole color wheel, right? Okay. And if anyone's asking, you guys, there's so many really cool um, resources and guides and different things that can kind of help you if you really struggle with color on Amazon. So I love this, like really, really simple, right? Tints, tones, and shades made by adding white, gray, or black. Add white for a tint, tone, add gray, shades, you add black. These are warm, these are cool. So if sometimes you forget, sometimes having something like this pocket guide, um, it can help you even pair together colors, kind of knowing, I mean, I mean I'm, I didn't get into like split complementary or analogous or any of those kind of things. You could learn so much when it comes to color and it truly does help you um, put shades together if that's something you struggle with. But I do find that the more you learn about color, the more you will train your eye in order to be able to see color. And then once you can kind of see it, I can easily just kind of swatch a shade and now, by now it's like anything, takes time, takes practice to train your eye. And now I can easily tell you 
which way a color is leaning, um, the undertone, all of that. I call it all the same thing. Is it, I call undertone most likely if is it warm, cool, neutral. Neutrals always are going to kind of push one way or the other. Because again, what makes a neutral? It makes a certain, it's just a per certain percentage of two shades mixed together. So another one, let's see, would be yellow and violet. Okay, see how it just makes a different neutral. Here's orange blue, how it makes a gray, okay? But it has to do with saturation of those shades and how they're mixed. Percentages will make different neutrals. So if you mix orange and blue at 25% and then orange and blue at 50%, you're gonna get two neutral colors and they're gonna look different. So that's how different tones, shades, all the things of eyeshadows are kind of created, right? They're just different mixtures and we put the shimmers in, they're beautiful and we love them, right? So let's talk eyes. So eye colors. I've done a video on eye colors before and so I will add in the swatch pictures of kind of what I recommend for every eye color. But it's basically just color theory. It's nothing, it's nothing fancy, okay? If you have, okay, let's do, let's do an easy one. Um, blue eyes are always my favorite. I always wish I had blue eyes because I feel like they have the best color combinations for blue eyes that will make your eyes look so blue. I love my daughter's eyes. She has the most beautiful blue eyes and she's going to have so much fun with makeup one day. So blue eyes, very easy. We already discussed that orange. Okay. So when it comes to orange, we know straight up that's warm, right? So we talked about that. That is right on the opposite side. Blue and orange are easy. So for blue eyes, you can either pick a color that's complementary, okay? And when it comes to eye color, if you pick a complementary color, meaning opposite the color wheel, that is what's going to give your eye color the most pop, okay? So just think when you're going opposite the color wheel, that, sometimes that one might be confusing, okay? We just go blue against orange, okay? That will make your eyes pop the most, okay? So this is why straight oranges, like these are easy to recognize, Leo, Tangerine, and Havana, okay? So obviously if you have blue eyes and you use a color like this, your blue eyes are gonna look more now, blue. blue is a cool color. I keep picking up the big monstrosity. Um, blue is a cool color. So if you want a more subtle eye look, you want to stick with those shades right around it. Meaning those cool tones, those cool icy tones, even black because black is made from excess blue. So using colors like those really dark colors, Obviously, you could use blues as well. Um, and then those cool shades like Glass Slipper and Unicorn. Those are going to be more of a subtle look, okay? Um, because you're sticking with cool on cool and you're not adding that contrasting. Well, another fun one is green. And usually if you see anything about green eyes, um, you usually see straight up purple tones being recommended. And that's because, I mean, true reds and eyeshadows, you don't really see, but obviously you can stick with these more red violet, but just straight up purple also will give enough contrast that you're going to always recommended shades in this color family like Amethyst, London, Bend and Snap, Gigi, Lullaby, all of those beautiful subtle purples. But now that we have a lot more red tones, you can totally use those. So when I first originally did that video, we didn't have colors like holly and pomegranate um, and Eve and Moscow. So those colors are also really great for green eyes. Now, obviously, if you have green eyes and you want more subtle, you're gonna go with those colors right near the green, which are greens, right? So we do have a lot of green, so Emerald City, 30, number 33, Ivy League. And then what also is next to greens, but those yellow tones. So in eyeshadow world, 
we go for gold. So if you see yellow, that's gonna be colors like blondy, gold digger, things like that, that have those golden undertones. Those are gonna be a little bit more subtle. So hazel eyes, I feel like are just kind of flip flop from green eyes. They're less green, but a lot of times, so I'm a hazel eye girl, so I totally get it. If I want my eyes to pop, I go for those greens and golds because it will bring out the green or gold in my eyes. And then when I want more of a subtle, analog analogous, I can't ever say that word, then I stick with those purple tones. And then we have brown. So I'm sure you could probably guess for brown eyes what the subtle look will be. It's gonna be sticking with brown tones, right? Granted, that is a lot of different undertones you can choose from. We have a lot of different neutrals. So your eye is very neutral, so keeping those very neutral are gonna give you a subtle look. But the cool thing about brown eyes is that you can literally wear any color to really make your eyes pop. And you really wanna kind of go with those bold colors, opposite of neutral. So that's when we go into those blues blue greens and those brighter purple tones that will really make your eyes pop. Let's do a few swatches. So let's do a little color comparisons so that we can recognize when something is warmer or cooler, right? So I'm gonna try to pick some colors that are similar to each other so that we can compare them because I'll be honest, when I was looking at the eyeshadow graphic, I feel like I was like, whoa, we have a lot of eyeshadows. It would be really hard to put them in order from coolest to warmest. And I was, <laughs> I was like, eh, maybe I sh I'm just gonna classify them as more wo warm, cool, or neutral, or if they are a warmer or cooler neutral. Because I feel like when it comes to neutral shades, being able to see if something pulls more warm or more cool is very important. For the most part, if something is not neutral, I think now after we went over the color wheel, you guys could probably tell when something is cool or when something is warm. So like we said before, uh, Sabrina versus Unicorn, okay? You see the almost blue, white. When something is white, white, silver, that is the cool side. Think icy. Think cool. Now this is more cream. You can probably think, okay, that's got more yellow, more gold in it, okay, which is towards the yellow family, which is warm, okay? So Unicorn versus Sabrina. That's why Unicorn is great for those that like those cool tones, and Sabrina is better for those girls that like warmth, like me. Okay, I have these right next to each other in my palette. And I've always thought pinks were very hard, to classify because I'm like, well, pinks can pull cool because I do think they can, even though technically they're just red mixed with white, right? So this is sis, okay, if you can see, and this is Venus, okay? So in comparison, yes, you can probably tell that Venus is much more cool, right? It pulls more gray, and that's because it has more purple in it. So you gotta think gray has more blue, okay? Blue, purple, cool, right? And then sis here, it almost has like white shimmer in it, which is in, but you can tell next to it, it's more pink. Pink is definitely warmer, but in my opinion, this and Soulmate are both good examples of more cooler pinks. So if you like um, pink but don't like warmth at all, these the shimmer of them almost reflect more white than gold. 
Um, maybe, maybe soulmate doesn't look as much on camera, but in real life it does. So both of those are, I would say still warm, but they are more the, uh, on the cooler side. It's like those brown neutrals can push one way or the other. I do feel like those that are on this border, okay, especially in this red violet or even these greens that have a lot of yellow in them, um, those can tend to pull more warm. And then these, like I used um, not too long ago, I was showing how Kin, okay, that is a great way to describe it. It is red violet, okay? It is purple, purple is cool, but it's got just enough red in it that that is a warmer purple, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Some can sway one way or the other. Like I said, it is hard to tell without seeing a swatch. We all know probably by now that the colors, the pictures online are very deceiving. Um, it depends on how heavy the swatch is, whether it can pull different ways, like for example, as you wish. Okay, there it looks cream. It looks straight up cream, which would be warm. But this color, when used lightly, and you actually look at the reflection of the iridescence, pulls purple. Like that one is so hard for me to classify because the iridescence is purple. It is straight up a cool, a cool iridescent shimmer. But in the 10, it looks like a cream shadow. It doesn't even look shimmery, but it is, but it depends on how you're wearing it. So some of these might be interesting for me to classify, but of course you guys know me, I will put it in the graphic at the end so you guys can screenshot. Um, so you have more of an idea because I know how deceiving the website is and just seeing them in the 10 is very deceiving as well. Okay, then we have really like, okay, these just, like I call them almost like flesh tones, right? Like it's obvious Valencia is warm because it has that orange undertone, but some of these like pop and stay golden, okay? Now comparing the two, you can probably see pop is a lot more gray, stay golden is a lot more golden. So this one's cool and this one's warm, okay? And so sometimes when you're picking that magic eraser shade, I like to say, like mine is chai. It, this one I feel like is one of the most neutrals. So let me see, I'm starting to get all mixed up. I need a, I need a wipe. So if you compare the three, some, then maybe it's a little bit easier to see how pup is cooler, stay golden is warmer. And then this chai is kind of right in between the two. Do you see that? So this one's a little bit more neutral. It doesn't, truly pull cool or warm in my opinion maybe if i had to i'd say maybe a titch to the warmer side than cooler side but that is what makes it such a great magic eraser shade is that it can really um kind of neutralize out your eyelid and be a really great shade to blend out other colors it's not gonna pull them warm or cool at all pinks Let's compare a couple pinks. You can probably tell this is Paris and this, which if you can even see it, it's Peppa, okay? And I feel like that's when it's really hard to distinguish when a color is very close to a skin tone, a neutral, I feel like it pulls much more neutral. Yes, this one's a little bit warmer. This one's a little bit more cooler because it's got, it's a more blue undertoned pink. And we'll talk a lot more about that when we get to lip and cheeks, because that's where you have to be able to look at those reds, pinks, and more corals to be able to see which way they're pulling. Okay, so let's get to the hard part. When we're talking about those neutrals, those browns, and how to really be able to distinguish, okay? Remember, you're looking, is it have more blue in it? Does it pull more gray? Um, does it pull more green? Remember, green 
is actually cool. So blue, green, um, olive undertone. So a good example of that um, is bird. Do you see how green that looks? Um, another one is labyrinth. Okay, they all they look olive. Okay, those are cool, but they're so neutral. They can be used as neutrals, but they're cooler neutrals. Okay, and then I'm always talking about oak. So in comparison, you can probably tell oak has a lot more gray. These have a lot more green. Okay, which they're all cool, but they're different tones. The amount of gray or whatever that cool tone is, the amount of green is different in these. Let's do a couple more of those neutrals. So let's do oak again, because I feel like I'm always talking about oak. And then let's do basic and cafe. These are very similar, in my opinion. Okay, so this is oak again. I always considered oak a darker version of basic. Do you see how neutral basic is? So that's why when people are like, I want neutral basic is what you start with. Oak, if you want something darker, they are the closest to a neutral, neutral, neutral. Yes, they pull a little bit cooler than warmer. So they would be more of a cool neutral, um, but they're, they're neutral, okay? Cafe, do you see that there's, I'm getting swatches all over the place. Do you see how there's more gray in that one? This one is, it's maybe hard to see, but it's got more purple in it. I feel like even comparing these two, it's, it's just, it's hard to tell on camera. Cafe almost might be a little bit more warm. This one, I, th I think oak is cooler. Um, but they're so similar. I don't feel like it would make that much difference if you're using them. You could probably use them a little bit more interchangeably. Okay, so let's go the other way. Let's go warmer. And I'll be honest, I feel like as a whole, we have more warm neutrals than we do cool neutrals, in my opinion. Oh, we do have some darker ones, so they don't fit in my, but these are my go-tos for brows and eyeliner, trust and coal, okay? You can probably see how much black gray is in those. Those, but this is a neutral dark brown. This is a charcoal, okay? And those are, they're not gonna pull warm at all. So when you're talking brows, you want to steer very clear of any neutrals that pull warm, okay? Um, brows are one thing, unless you're a natural redhead, you don't want that in your brows. Okay, so when we talk about, when we talk about warm, of course I have to talk about my favorites. Let's, I tend to go for the warm neutrals, um, but I like to pair them with cool shades as well. So we have Bubba, Sedona, Butterscotch, and Zion, okay? So you'll notice how Bubba doesn't look quite so warm in comparison to Butterscotch. Sedona doesn't even look quite so warm. It looks very, very close to neutral, just a hint of that red undertone, okay? This has more orange in it. Zion is more, more red than Sedona by far. And then we even have Holly now, which I'm running out of fingers, but that is even, <laughs> oh, it's like the worst swatching ever. Um, it's even darker and warmer, okay? So again, when we talk about neutrals, they can be varying degrees. Like the closer they are technically to orange, the warmer they are. Even though I feel like a lot of times we're looking at the amount of red in something to determine how warm it is. But if you actually think about it, the closer you get to red, the closer you get to purple and the more cool it is, okay? So red is kind of in that, that borderline. We're looking for orange. Um, but colors that have more orange, yellow, 
Okay, Havana, Tangerine, Leo. These are my blue-eyed girls. And if you don't want to go that bold, that orange, then that's when I say just give those warm shades a try, like Butterscotch, Bubba, Sedona. Even those are going to make your eyes pop. And if you are wanting to go with those purples and you're like, oh, I don't want to just use straight up purple, you can pick those neutrals that have more purple undertones like Cafe or um, Lullaby. So we got Cafe, Lullaby, my favorite ever, Revival. Those are all more purple undertoned. Um, yes, I call everything a neutral, it seems like, but to me, <laughs> this one is neutral as well. Um, it looks more, um, I'd say, red violet. Say when swatched, it looks more like it's in the red violet which is kind of right in between cool and warm. It's technically warm though, um, but if you compare it to something like pomegranate, it's much cooler, right? So it's all, I feel like a, a lot of eyeshadows is all subjective. It's all what you're pairing it with, what it's next to, um, and it can pull easily cooler or warmer depending on the combination of shades. So if you're putting something really cool next to something really warm, that cool shade is gonna look more gray and more cool. And that warmer shade is gonna look even more warm in comparison. Hope that makes sense. All right, let's do a quick eye look. Let's do one based on eye color, shall we? So I have very hazel eyes. In fact, sometimes my eyes look very green. Sometimes they look very gold. They tend to change depending on what I'm wearing, but I don't do green and gold very often. Um, it's a holiday look for me, for sure. I always do it as a holiday. So let's see if we can do a more subtle green and gold look for my hazel eyes that make my eyes pop, but it's not gonna be too bold. First of all, let's pick out a gold. Again, golds are kind of like a neutral to me. Um, yes, they are in the warm neutral family, but they go in kind of order, like this is gonna be more towards yellow, obviously. Then we got gold there, so blondie, gold. Um, probably my favorite of all time bright eyes. So that's blondie, gold digger, bright eyes. You can kind of tell, you know, we're going from yellow to a little bit more orange. This one's got more neutrality to it. Bright eyes has a little bit more, a little bit more brown to say the least. Um, then we have colors like foxy, which you can probably, hopefully you can tell, has even less gold, more brown. So just like when you're picking a gold, you can pick towards the neutral side towards the warmer side. The more you go to the orange or yellow, the warmer it's gonna so, be. So I love a green and gold combo because, can you guess what I'm gonna say? It's already, cause well, let's see, where's it, where's it stop? Right <laughs> here to right here, if I can find it. Um, when you have green, green and gold, you're already using warm and cool together. Um, and they create that balance, all right? So that being said, I know when I'm gonna have gold and green, I'm gonna have some balance there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try to pick a transition shade, that crease color that's going to be more in the neutral family. That way I'm, it's not getting pulled one way or the other, and I can have that balance. Let's just pick the most neutral of all neutrals. Basic. Basic is a staple that should be in everyone's collection, in my opinion. So I've already primed, evened out my eyelids, and powdered. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and start with this color to kind of carve out my crease. Give my eyes some definition, and open up my hooded eye. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna flip over my brush, use the same color as always in Halo. Find the lower lash line. Okay, and then I'm gonna go into my Magic Eraser shade, which again is a neutral, this is Chai, and I'm just gonna barely kind of use it on the lid, even it out. I'm gonna use it right here to kind of blur that edge and you can kind of use it to blend out if needed. Not much, but gives me a nice base for my next color. Let's use a couple of different golds because let's be honest, I can't decide. Um, hmm. I'm going to go ahead and use bright eyes with my finger. Bright eyes is one of my very favorites of all time. Okay. I'm just going to press it on the first half of my lid. Okay. Keeping it out of the crease. And it is such a pop shade for hazel eyes. Okay. And then we're going to use blondie as our highlight. Now it is a, it's a more foiled shade. Um, it's pretty bright, right? So I'm going to strategically use my multitasker and just a touch of it right on that tear duct. Now this shade is really beautiful in the tear duct, I feel like, but under the brows, um, I feel like I need to stick with the cream, the natural looking highlight, or it's going to be like this pop of more yellow, right? And I don't want that. So I am gonna stick with um, Drift or Sabrina and just keep it high right above my arch my brow and blend that out because I like that very subtle, just enough to lift, not enough to really be able to see color, right? You wanna almost look, make that look like a natural highlight with just the lightest points of your skin tone. All right, so we can go really bold and dramatic or we can go really subtle. So when it comes to using green, I feel like it can be a really fun shade, but it can also be a very intimidating shade. So if you want to keep it subtle, try it as liner. So like go ahead and add black liner if you want and then kind of top it with that green and it will give you some drama, give you that pop of color without being over the top. If you want a lot more drama, we can use it as that outer corner shade, okay? So when it comes to greens, I guess my, uh, technically some of these may have green undertones, but these are a little bit neutral. I would say that my main three would be Ivy League, number 33, and Emerald City, okay? So when you look at these, you can probably tell. Emerald City has more blue in it, okay? Number 33 has a little bit more yellow in it. And then Ivy League is uh, probably the coolest because, well, I don't know. Emerald City is also very cool because it's got a lot of blue. But this one also has a lot of excess blue, which is what's making it so dark. It's got black. It is definitely a shade of green, meaning it's got black added to it to give it that depth. So we could go with a couple different things. Let's try, let's try Ivy League and number 33, shall we? Okay, so first I'm going to use the smudge brush and I'm gonna use Ivy League in the outer corner as depth. Now you don't need much of this shade. It definitely is very dark and gives a lot of depth. Okay, so it really is that pop of green. Now sometimes cooler colors can be a little bit more difficult to blend out or look a little bit more disjointed. So my trick is to add some warmth as well if you're having trouble getting more of a seamless look on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a touch of cocoa, which is a warm neutral brown, and I'm just gonna take it on that outside corner 
on the very edge. Okay, so I'm still getting that green, but I'm having help with it blending seamlessly. Okay, do you see how it just kind of helped blur that edge a little bit? Okay, now I'm gonna take the other side of this side of the smudge brush and just take a touch of that number 33 right there where the gold and green meet. Okay, so it's almost like ombre from Blondie Gold. That's not Gold Digger, <laughs> Bright Eyes. Um, number 33 into that Ivy League. Just a touch right where they meet. So you got a nice kind of blend. And then I'm gonna go back in to basic and make sure all my edges are blended. Okay, now for the lower lash line. When using a really dramatic dark color like that on the outer edge, it can really look really jarring to just kind of stop and not use the color on the bottom as well. So I'm going to pull that Ivy League down and that's gonna be my outside edge color as well. But before I do that, I'm gonna add some liner because when using these bold, deep colors, your lashes can get really lost. So I'm gonna go ahead and add Black Friday. And then instead of using my normal coal to set it, I'm gonna use that Ivy League. So we're gonna green it up. Okay, and if it looks jarring at all, remember you can always go back, add more Bubba to blur it out, that neutral plus that cool. So we've got warm going into cool using a little bit more of that new, whoops, that was green. <laughs> using a little bit more of that, um, Cocoa on the outer corner to blend out if needed, okay? One of the biggest I? tips is when cools or warms aren't blending, add the opposite. And whether that is a neutral, that pushes in that way. Not necessarily, all right, I've got green or red because it's opposite the color wheel but just adding that neutral that pushes the other direction, um, I'm telling you, it always gives a better blend every time. Okay, so I have yet to do my lip and cheek, but that's gonna be in part two. But there you go, that is my warm and cool pop, but I feel like you could go a lot more dramatic. You could put a lot more green, a lot more gold, if you wanted it to pop your eyes even more, but hopefully you can see that using those complimentary pop shades can make your eyes really pop. I hope that was helpful and the color wheel wasn't too confusing um, when it comes to being able to kind of recognize when something is warmer or cool. So look for those reds, orange, pink, yellow, you're on the warm side. And then those greens, blues, purples, you're on the cool side. And if it, you feel like a color's got a little bit more purple to, to it, it's pushing cool. Orange, it's pushing warm. If you know those basics, you will be able to pick and choose amazing color combinations. With that and my number categorization system, you should have all of the tips and tricks you need to picking the perfect eye look. So be sure to watch part two and we'll get into a little bit more complicated being able to really be able to see the difference when it comes to lip and cheeks, which ones are warmer or cool, and be able to mix colors if you need to adjust the warmth or the cool tone. As always, if you're needing an artist or if you're needing a color match, I'd be happy to help you out. My color match request is in the drop box below the video where you can send me all of your preferences and I will send you custom 3D foundation match. I can help you with eyeshadows and lip and cheeks as well. 
As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Love you.